good night. My name is Adam Romeo and I'm representing Client Silver Technology, iTech285, and lecturer Andre Kadogan. Tonight we're going to discuss how to link Microsoft SQL 2008 to Microsoft Access 2007. We'll begin this tutorial by saying that before we get started, you must have Microsoft SQL 2008 installed on your machine, otherwise this tutorial would not make any sense whatsoever. So, once you have SQL Server 2008 installed, also install Microsoft Office. Both programs are necessary for this to work. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, SQL Server, or SQL, is also known as SQL, is structured query language. It's basically a programming language that is used to manage rela relational databases, or RDBMS. So, we're going to start by looking for Microsoft SQL Server 2008. As you can see, it's already here. So I'm just going to open the folder. And we are going to run SQL Server Management Studio. Click on here. Now during the installation, you'll be queued to enter certain choices. And depending on your choices, the settings will be saved after the installation. For my installation, I've used almost all default settings, so you can also do the same. To log on to the SQL Server database, um, SQL Server, you're going to choose Database Engine, and you're going to choose the name of the server that you created during your installation. Whether you used your Windows credentials to log into the server, or your own custom SQL Server authentication is up to you. For now, we'll use Windows authentication for mine. And we'll connect. Here, as you can see, this is the SQL Server here and all the items in it. Now, we're going to create a new database, so let's expand this folder. As you can see, there's a list of databases here. We're going to create a new one, just to go through the tutorial. So we're going to right-click, go into New Database, and a window should pop up, allowing you to create your new database. So we're going to name this Student Information 1. And click OK. It'll take a while to create the database. There you have it. See? Pretty simple, isn't it? So here's your new database. Now, what we're going to do is create a table inside said database. So we're going to expand it for the item. We're looking for tables. Expand the tables folder. As you can see, there's no tables here, so we're going to create one of our own. I'm going to right click, click on new table, and you should get the design view here. Now, in this view, you enter all the fields that you want to be populated after. So, we're going to start off with student ID data types. Now, you will have to Google and research the different data types on your own to sort out which ones are best suited for your database, whatever you decide to create. For me, I'm going to use the simple ones as possible. So, I'm going to use nchar for student ID. So, at least it'll be about 10 digits for the ID. I'm going to put student first name. I'm setting this to text. And by setting it to text, there should be no definite limit on how many characters you can use. So next field will be student last name. We're also going to set this to text as well. DOB or data booth. I'm going to set this as date. Number of classes. We'll be setting this to You can leave it on NCHAR, I suppose. 
an amount of fees. And I will set this to NCHAR also. I'm keeping it simple as possible. So there you have it, all five fields created. Okay. So now that we have our table, we're going to save it. So what you're going to do is right click on the tab on top where you have the title of the table. Right click on it and click on save table one. Now you enter name. So we're going to name the student. Oops, really bad spelling there. Student info one. And click OK. And there you have it. The table is ready. Now it's time to populate the table. So you're going to right click on DBO student info and click edit top 200 rows. As you can see, it has a sort of similar view to access, but not exactly. And here, the cells are empty, which is why you see the null here. So now it's just time to populate it. So let's put about three people on it. So we'll put first person, which would be me. Classes three of the fees. Right, and there you go. The first set of cells have been populated. And now for the second one. Oh, see what happens when you make a typo. This is what happens when you make an error in the format of the cell. As you can see, the data boot, I put the D as 44 when this couldn't be accepted. So let's change that, shall we? I'm going to change it to 14. See? And let me go ahead as usual. Right, 3000. Alright, one last row to populate. Nineteen fifty five. Oh, and there's another error. My bad. So eight twelve. Classes one, mount fifteen hundred. Right, so there you go. All have about three sets of information there. Now we don't really have to save it. We could just close it off because it's all right, um, automatically entered onto the table. So what I'm going to do is going to close this, close the design view, make sure it's not open. I'm going to minimize SQL Server and we're going to run Microsoft Access. Now, as you can see, my Microsoft Access is already here, but I'll just go through the long way with you. Let's go to, go to All Programs, Microsoft Office, Access 2007. Now, anytime you're doing this, you must always remember to run this program in administrator mode to get all available features. So, I'm going to hold on shift, right click, run as administrator, click on it. There you go, access is up. So, we're going to create a new database. I'm going to name this TUD INFO1. I'm going to create it. Now they already gave us the table, but we won't need this, so we're going to close this off. Let's see, it's empty. I'm going to go to external data, because we need to link the data from the SQL Server to access. I'm going to click on more. I'm going to choose ODBC database, which is to import a link ODBC database, such as SQL Server. That's what we want to do. So, click on this. 
Now to select the source and the destination of the data, I'm going to link to the table source by creating a linked table. So the link table will link the information between SQL and Access. So when you select that, click OK. I'm going to get a select data source window. I'm going to go to machine data source up here. I'm going to create a new one. Now, if you had run Access in Administrator Move, this option becomes available. If you had not, this would have been grayed out. So, again, must run Access in Administrator Mode. So after you select System Data Source, I'm going to click Next. You're going to go through the list of drivers and you're going to look for SQL Server. Here it is. I'm going to click Next. Make sure it's the right information. Click Finish. Now you're going to need to type a name to refer to the data source. Something simple. Student Info. Now you don't necessarily need to put a description, but that's up to your discretion. Now you choose the server that you created the database on. Mine would be local, but yours would be either similar or somewhat different, depending. So once you select the server, click Next. You can choose which logon you used to create the server and Select that. I'll be going with Windows NT Authentication. Click Next. Now this is what you have to change. You have to change the default database from master to the database you created. For me it will be this one, Student Info 1. I'm going to click Next. There's no need to change anything here. Click Next and Finish. And this will give you, this is the readout of all the information here. I'm going to test the data source just to make sure it works. Test completed successfully. Great. So, that means it's working. And here it is. Student information underscore one. I'm going to click OK. And it should load the information that I want. Now here's a list of all the tables that's in the database. You can see here, I'm going to choose this one. This is the table that we made in the SQL Server. I'm going to select it and click OK. And here it is. Now, what you can do is either before or after, depending on what you want to do, um, before or after opening the table, you can right click, go to Linked Table Manager, Select the tables you want to be updated because you'll be entering information on a regular basis and click OK. All selected link tables were successfully refreshed. Right. So I'm going to close this, double click on the table, and there you have it. This is the same information we entered from the SQL server side. And Seeing that we have access to the table now, we can actually enter more information. Right. So but we want to double check to make sure that whatever you enter on this side will show back up on the SQL side. So I'm going to minimize access, go back to SQL Server, I'm going to open up the table. Now we don't need to edit the 200 rows again because we can enter it from the access side. So what we're going to do is going to select top 1000 rows. It's going to give you two different sets of windows. The window underneath will show you the information that was entered. As you can see, the third set of information I entered showed up here. And that's it. That is basically how you link SQL Server to Microsoft Access. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, and I should have done this a lot earlier, was that when you edit the top 200 rows, before you enter any information, you must set your primary key. So what we're going to do 
is gonna redesign the table. So you're gonna right click on the DBO student info, left click on design. I'm gonna get back to design view. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on set primary key. Now you do this as soon as you create the table and you create all the fields that you want to put in for the database. If you don't do this, then it may or may not work afterwards, but for surety, you must do this first before continuing. And that's it. That is the end of the tutorial. I hope this was, this tutorial was easy enough to understand. If you have any troubles, you can comment on the video underneath. Also, if pos if I can, I will post a link to a detailed step-by-step a tutorial on how to install SQL Server 2008 um, that will be coming under the, this video or I will probably embed it in the video as a caption. Right. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. See you again.